I think we thought this was gonna be quite a casual walk today. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're doing a massive van trip. We're heading up to the Peak District. So we're going away for five days. Today, we're heading to Alton Towers for the first day. Then tomorrow, we're heading over to the Peak District. So just on the motorway at the moment, we're heading up to Alton Towers. So we've got about two hours to go. It'll be a really exciting day. We've been before, but yeah, it's gonna be pretty good. And then tomorrow, we've got another exciting day. We're heading over to Sheffield. We're gonna go see a specialist about the van and get the limiter removed on the van. Because at the moment, it's only limited to 74 miles an hour, which is obviously fine. But when you're trying to overtake someone like a lorry or something on the motorway, it's just an absolute nightmare. You just really need that extra bit of kick. So I know it's a big problem with a lot of ex-British gas caddies or any van if you've got a limiter on it. So if you wanna know how to remove your limiter on your van, keep watching this video and I'll explain it all later. And I'll show you the different ways that you can remove it and how we're gonna remove it as well. Oh, and we're also gonna get cruise control fitted and multifunctional display so you can see like miles per gallon and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. So at the moment it's absolutely tipping it down. So hopefully when we get to Owen Towers, it won't be raining. And I think it's really loud in the cab, so I think I might put some sound deadening underneath the floor because the, the, obviously the van's really quiet since you've done the sound deadening, but as you can probably hear, it's quite loud. Obviously, I'll edit the audio to make it better. Almost there. About four and a half hours. We're getting close. We've arrived. <laughs> But it's 70 minute queue. 70? 70, yeah. Whoa. What do you think about it? It was absolutely tipping it down earlier, but because we've got fast track, we've been on pretty much every ride now. We've just come out of Owen Towers, now we've got to find the car. There she is, in the distance. Hey everyone, so we're just leaving Owen Towers now. It's nearly half past six. So we did pretty well. We lasted all day and we got on pretty much every roller coaster that we wanted to get on and we even got on the Whipper Man and I was so desperate to get on that one because it was brand new the last time I went and I couldn't get on it so it was really good, really fast. So we're on the next bit of our journey now, we're heading to the, our campsite a bit further, it's an hour north from where we are now so we've got a little bit of a drive, we're going to pick up some more food on the way and then we'll be setting up camp for the night. Views. We're on the most stunning route, an hour up north from Alton Towers. And honestly, this camera is just not doing the views any justice. It looks so much better in real life. Look at that valley down there. And the sweeping corners, it's just so beautiful. So guys, we've just arrived at our first campsite and we're just setting up. This is an amazing drive, as you saw, through the Peak District, and this is where we're camping. So we're gonna be here for the next three nights, which will be really cool. Do loads of walks and camp from here. But I think it's time for some dinner. In case anyone hasn't seen before, this is a set we do. A little tent there, and then the van there. Freshly painted bumpers and wheels. And then the setup inside, we just have an air bed on the floor at the moment. So we've got a makeshift bed. Normally have a double air bed, because if you put the wheel boxes in, it won't fit anymore. So we've got a single air bed, and then we're gonna make one up with cushions because we don't have a bed built yet. So once the bed's built, that'll be a slide out bed. It will also slide out the back here. Um, so hopefully get that built. Or if anyone wants to help us build it, that'd be amazing. Anyway, this is our bed build at the moment. But we've got the cladding done. Got the lanyard on the back, so you can open the door from the inside, which is pretty cool. Obviously got the bumpers painted and the wheels. It's all come together. So next we need to clad the wheel boxes and then we can varnish the whole thing and then we can put the floor down and build the bed. Have you got any pillows for your head? Yeah. I think that looks quite comfy. Obviously got the vent on the roof. It goes through here. We can close that at night or open it in the day. There's one pillow, another pillow. That's a bed setup. Looking good? Comfortable? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> and then we've also got a screen cover at the front here, so it's complete blackout. But we will be putting a curtain across this curtain rail. And I'll be making a video of how show you how to do that as well. So like always, we've got homemade pizza for the first night. Pretty good way to eat your dinner. So homemade pizza. That's all good. And then we've got vegetable chili and we've got turkey chili. I think and I'm not sure about the last night. Pasta. We've got pasta one night. Pasta. Pasta as well, so easy cooking. 
Morning guys, it's day two of our trip and it is freezing cold. <laughs> it was really, really cold last night in the van. I don't know if it's because we've got the vent in now that it's so cold, um, or it could be that we don't have any curtains, all the coldness is coming through the windows at the front, so you need to get that sorted. But yeah, so today's really exciting. We're going to Sheffield now. I'm going to have some breakfast and stuff like that and get ready. And then we're going to Sheffield to get the van limiter removed and get cruise control fitted and multifunctional display put in the van. So this is really handy if Anyone who's got an ex-British gas van, you'll know that removing the limiters can be really tricky, or any commercial van, British gas ones especially. So if you've got a Mark III, which is 2015 or older, so Mark II or Mark III, it's quite easy. You can just remove them, delete them, make them higher, or map them out. If you've got a 2015 or newer, which is a Mark IV, so a 65 plate or newer like we've got, they're quite difficult to get out. So there's three ways you can do it. You can either try and do a VCDS, which I've already tried, it doesn't work, it just kept resetting. Um, you can sometimes they're burnt into the ECU chip, so you have to get a new chip and put that in. Well, the third way again is to map it out, but some people have tried this, it hasn't worked. So it seems to be a really big problem that British gas is really hard to get in. So at the moment, it's stuck to 74 miles an hour, which isn't bad, but just when you're on the motorway and you want to overtake someone, it can be quite annoying and it can be quite dangerous because you go to overtake and you can't go any quicker. First on the inside lane speeds up, you're then just stuck because you can't exactly brake. But yeah, it'd be really good to get that removed. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they can get it removed. And we're going to a guy in Sheffield who can do it for 20 pounds. So that's the other thing that I've looked around and quite a lot of people quoted me 200 pounds plus that just to look at it. So that's just ridiculous. I know everyone has to pay for their, you know, keep the company costs and everything like that and pay for the machines that they bought over time and everything like that but this guy would do it for 20 quid and everyone else is just yeah 150 200 pound plus fat was just an absolutely ridiculous for something you can just plug in and delete it just seems extortionate so yeah just be wary if you are paying someone to do it that you are paying the right price so it shouldn't be shouldn't be more than 50 quid i would, would have thought plus fat um really yeah we be good to get that removed and then the van be a lot better and get cruise control fitted and everything like that and the multifunctional display which is really cool so we'll go do that and i'll show you what it's like afterwards so we're here some industrial estate all right so you've just left chris bauman's garage very exciting yeah so we have just had multifunctional display put in cruise control limiter removal which is pretty tricky so i'll go into that in more detail but he's got rid of that well, I haven't tested it yet, but you know, I, I trust him. He's a very, very nice guy, and I highly recommend going to see him. But yeah, we've got to see if uh, cruise control works. Now, I think it's 30 miles an hour, so we're almost in 30. So, oh, I've just put it on. I don't know if you can see the little green thing on the dash there. And she is on. She's good, and cruise control is working. I can, Take I, your foot off. Yeah, hey. foot off. <laughs> I can obviously, and then these little buttons here on the side, I can push them up or down on the cruise control. So you can see there, it's now set to 32, and now 31. So it's like up and down. I didn't know you could do it as well, but he's also put in like racing spindles. So when the car's locked and you turn it on for the first time, the spindles then whiz to like full and down again, which is like a really cool function. So you don't need to have a new cluster or a dash or anything to do that. You can just put that in, which is really cool. I've got my functional display. So at the moment I've got how many range you've got left, 335 miles, but that's because we've been driving around Shepherds, so it's quite low. So, and then we've also got average miles per gallon. So on 33.3, and then that's what miles per gallon we're doing now. Um, time, we've got temperature, we've got miles per hour. So now I'm, it tells you as well miles per hour in the middle, so a digital miles per hour, which is really, really good. Yeah, I think that's everything he put on, didn't it? He did so his cruise control, remove the limiter, and then he's also put in the multifunction things. And then also some other stuff in the bonnet to make it more efficient. But yeah, so it's really, really good. That was 190 quid for all of it, so it's a brilliant price. So I'd highly recommend you guys doing that. Put his link to his Facebook page in the video description, so you can check on that message him and get in contact with him that way just for clarification for anyone watching what did you get quoted for doing this in down in you so know, down southwest in Devon, just by by vw obviously vw group it was 50 quid just to look at the vehicle because they charge 100 pound an hour labor which is absolutely extortionate um, so without even doing anything it was 50 quid just to have it just literally to have it and do nothing to it uh, most places, the best one we had guy locally, I think he said it was like 50 quid plus fat to do the limiter. He didn't know if he could do it, that was just to have a look at it again. But loads of places like the remapping and rolling road places, um, they're all quoting like, you know, two, 300 pounds plus fat. I think one was 125 plus fat. So, well, I mean, it, obviously prices always vary. There's, a, there's an economy in the north of England and there's an economy in the south of England. There's two different economies and everybody knows that, that everything's way cheaper up north than it is down south. But yeah, I don't think if you're going to get a limiter removed, I wouldn't pay, you should be paying around maybe 50 quid plus fat. I wouldn't, I think anything more than that is probably expensive. I know everyone's got to cover their costs, like I said earlier in the video, you've got to pay for your machinery just like any self-employed person. You're not paying for the time right there, you're paying for their years of experience, 
and all the insurance they have in contributions, you know, tax, everything like that, it all adds up. So you're paying for all of that, but at the same time, you still can't be ripping people off. So I don't know, it's hard to say. This guy's definitely the best in the country. But if you're if someone's querying you maybe two for inch quid to remove a limiter, I'd say maybe try and find somewhere else. Mm, just question it for sure. <laughs> yeah, but it's hard. Maybe hundred quid, max hundred quid, I'd say. All right, so from the Sheffield garage, we've come here because it's on our way back to our campsite. So it's like a wooded nature reserve. We're going to have a little walk, but first we're going to have some lunch. So we're just walking through Wyoming Brook Nature Reserve. Is that what it's called, Brett? Wyoming yeah. Brook Nature yeah. Reserve. Really nice, just a little detour on the way back. And then we're gonna head over to the Bramford Ridge? Bramford. Bramford. Edge. Bramford Ed Ford. What is it? Bramford Edge, I think. Bramford Edge. Yeah, something like that. Which is meant to be a big lookout. And then there was another one, I can't remember what it's called, but we'll go that. But yeah, this nature reserve is pretty nice. So the river's really nice. Yeah, so we went down a really steep hill, lots of rocks and steps. We just followed the river on the bottom and it was just really nice. You know, the sound of water, it's really relaxing after being in a big city. So yeah, very nice. Yeah, I've got to say Sheffield's pretty nice as well, before on the bit we saw. Yeah, I liked it, it was good. But yeah, let us know in the comments what you want from these videos, because we're vlogging, don't really know what we're doing. I guess we're just showing our trips in the van, so if anyone's looking to buy a van, just what you can do in it and the places to go. Um, we're going to start a blog as well, just so you can put with recommendations of campsites and everything up, so you know we can find out the best spots to go and the best campsites that are off the grid a lot cheaper. So guys, this is the spindle thing that he's put in, the race one. You can just see they just go up and down, which is pretty cool. Cool little feature. So this is the new stalk with cruise control, so you've got it off, cancel on, but it's probably not focusing because it's on a GoPro. You can see it there, and then you've got like a tiny little thing in the dash there, just cruise control in the miles per hour, and then multi-function buttons here. So as you can see, the miles per gallon, that's average miles per hour to drive along, time temperature miles per hour no that's average miles per hour miles per hour um average miles per hour, i don't know and then we've got how far we've been how far we've got left in the tank and then back to miles per gallon parked on the side of the road so we are now at stanage edge which is over there if you know where the van is it stands out with like yellow yeah, one over there miss it. Stop. <laughs> We're at Bamford Edge now. Stop there. This one I think is better than the other one. Bamford Edge. So I'm just getting ready to cook some dinner. We've got two camping gas stoves. And normally I like to cook on the floor so I can sit down and I use the table to put everything on. So we're gonna make some rice with one and then we've got some pre-made sort of turkey chili stuff that I'm just gonna heat up. So right, so the first stove is on. I'm gonna boil up some water. And when we go camping, I find it easier just to buy these boil in a bag rice things just because it's quicker. And also one bag is like the perfect amount for one person. So it's just you don't have to measure it out or anything. And then the second stove got some like turkey stuff that I made the other day. So I'm just going to heat it up. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy having the stoves. Last time I went camping, my cousin took the mickey. She thought it was hilarious that I had two stoves, but I find it helpful. So. Oh, I had a bit of wastage there. But it went on the floor. The floor. Turkey chili with some rice. Oh, that's a hot plate. Bon appetit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Britt gets a chair, but I have to sit on the floor. No, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting to the end of the day too. Uh, tomorrow we're going to go to Mermaid's Pool. So we're going to drive like 10 minutes from here. Then we're going to walk about an hour to Mermaid's Pool. Do a big walk around there. Um, which is a pool you can swim in and then come back and then we're going to walk up one of the tours behind us, which would be pretty cool. But yeah, this is the end of the day too. So we'll see you tomorrow. Morning everyone. So it's day three in the peak district and today we're going well we're going to go on a hike to see mermaid's pool but there's lots of things on the way so we're just driving to somewhere called jacob's ladder 
hoping that there's somewhere to leave the van and then we're gonna start our walk right so we're down here and we're hoping to walk to jacob's ladder and then i'm hoping there's going to be somewhere we can cut across and go around this loop here a mermaid's pool somewhere here so that's the walk we're planning on doing it's a lovely day definitely different from the past couple days so perfect weather for walking day 55 still going it's the biggest hill we've ever walked Pretty cool, isn't it? There she is, hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Good amount of steps, isn't it? So this is Jacob's ladder. You think we're at the top then? Well, I wished, but obviously it wasn't going to be that easy, was it? No, we're going to go way up there. Pretty good so far though. See the view behind me. I think we thought this was going to be quite a casual walk today. And not, <laughs> not much of a hike, but it seems to be quite big, which is quite good. I really like a good hike, but <laughs> Brit's that keen, aren't you? No, it's good. I just wasn't prepared for this. No. I don't think it would be this steep. So we've got to go all that way. Right, so we've just got to the, one of the highest bits where there's a big post. I think it's called Kinder, Kinderlow Trig Point. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going straight on from there. And we're going to Kinder, Kinder Down. Downfall, which is like the next peak. And then hopefully we'll be at Mermaid's Pool after that. A bit cooler up here. It was a pretty, pretty big climb up here, but it's nice now. We're at the top. It's nice and breezy. I think we're going to go along there and down, down that edge. Yeah, I don't know. That cliff there, yeah. True. Looks like the rain's coming. So that could be it down there. I can't even see. Little pond. We go along there. Down. Good spot for lunch. That's not even yours. And there's a pool down there. But there's no path, so we haven't gone. <laughs> Gonna go back now. So we didn't actually go down to the pool because you can't. Uh, well, you can go down to it. You just literally go off piece yeah, like could. down here. So you could have done it. But when we got there, we just thought, ah, it's not worth it. Because it's all, because it's so dry at the moment. And, oh, in the drought, <laughs> it's falling over. <laughs> so dry at the moment in the drought. Um, we just thought it's not worth it because it didn't really look like there's much there. So we got to the pool and came back. We haven't done much filming because it's got really busy. Like it was not raining people here at all, but now it's just like flooded with people. So we're still not confident enough, well, I'm not, to film when people are around. Because it's just a bit weird and everyone keeps looking at you. So yeah, but anyway, we're on the way back now, going down. We're going down a different way from Jacob's Ladder and then we're going to, I think, a B29 crash site on the other side of the Peak District. So that'll be pretty cool to look at that. I think that's from World War II. It's day 65, walk number two. We are now going to the B29 crash site. It's from World War II, I think. I might be wrong, but I haven't really looked at the history, but I'll find out when we get there, I guess. So we've just driven from the other car park, driven about 30 minutes, parked on the side of the road and now hiking up to the crash site. So we've just been up to the B29 crash site and now we're on our way back. We've got to head down here. I don't know if you can see, there's a row of cars in the distance on the road and you can see the little blue van sticking out. You probably can't see it on this, but yeah. So we've got to head back there and then we're going to go back to the campsite and have some well-deserved chilli. I think a vegetable chilli tonight. So looking forward to that after being on our feet all day. So we're getting to the end of the walk from the B29 crash. I don't know how far we've walked today, probably like, how far do you reckon we've walked today? 20 miles? <laughs> okay. How many steps have you done? I mean, I've done 30,000 steps. And you've probably done more than me. I'm not sure. Yeah, we must have done at least 15 miles. I was going to say around between 13 and 15 maybe. Which doesn't, which doesn't sound very far, to be fair. Yeah, it feels pretty far going up and down hills. I don't know what the elevation is. It must be a couple thousand feet. Sure. Still waiting on that chilli. Last time 
obviously for you guys watching this it's only like a few seconds between clips but for us since i recorded that it's probably been like half an hour 40 minutes and then the car is down there with the van i don't know if you can see it yet then we've got about 40 minute drive back to the campsite and then we can have the chili don't know if a gopro has good enough range to pick that up it looks pretty cool sun rays coming through the clouds there she is we are back. What's on the menu tonight? Well, I'm sure the repetition of the words veg chili has come up enough in this video and come up enough for everyone to know what we're having for dinner tonight. Look at that. Delicious. 60 miles per gallon we are. It's pretty impressive. They're really good on fuel. Morning everyone. At the last campsite, day five. Yeah, a campsite's called Camping at the Hollies. So here we are, and we're going to do a walk today called the Roaches. So we're heading up there, so out the campsite and up there. Pretty cool. Yeah, so our little setup. It's pretty much always have the same setup: a van and a tent. So we're cooking it. it rains because the caddy's quite small, so if it rains or anything, you just go in the tent. Yeah, we're lucky with the weather. It's been good every day, which is nice. We've just parked up, ready for the walk. What a great view. There she is, like always, gotta get the van in. Looking good. The view looks good as well. We've just seen a futuristic car from Tron. Pretty weird. Let me know in the comments if you like it or dislike it. Pretty good view, eh? Careful. Like how far down it is. Don't wanna get blown off there. Yeah, right. These rocks here giving me little mermaid vibes. <laughs> Very just on the rock. Very different. Made it to the top. Yay! Made it. Very windy though. Yeah. Time to go back down and have some lunch. <laughs> just had a picture in between these big rocks. So tall, it honestly like they could just like fall on top of us. <laughs> down along the top and now we're going down the road back to the van. There she is. We're still not back yet. We got free rain on the motorway. Brit's driving, so it's full speed ahead. And we got all the other people leaving Devon on the other side. <laughs> losers! <laughs> <laughs> Bank holidays, there's a lot of traffic. But yeah, that's the good thing about coming back to Devon is that, yeah, you would never get any traffic. <laughs> and we are doing 59.9 miles to the gallon. We are back in Devon now, so that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.